Hey everyone and welcome back to r slash TIFU, the subreddit where people tell hilarious stories of ways that they screwed themselves or someone they care about over. Today's post, TIFU by exposing a customer's affair to his wife. Names are changed for the sake of this post. So this took place maybe half an hour ago, and to be honest, there's still a chance there will be some kickback for this today. I, 25 male, work in a call center, and am doing so for the duration of this pandemic while I wait to find out what's happening about going back to university. It's no career, but it's a pretty nice job with some decent people, and it's easy. All we really do is facilitate switches for people looking for better deals on household stuff, usually their internet provider or supplier of gas or electricity, etc. We have agents in the field who make sales, then call us for verification with the customer. Simple, right? Not today. See, usually it's company policy not to do callbacks. Nobody wants annoying call center calls, right? So unless the customer specifically requests a scheduled callback, we just don't do them. I had a customer two days ago looking for a pretty pricey internet switch, going from some basic setup to a full TV, phone, internet package, the works, all the channels, anytime calls to numbers including international, 500 megabits Wi-Fi, and it came to over 100 euros a month. I informed the customer, who's an impatient sounding guy, that because of the price increase he'll need to have a quick credit check run on him, and it'll mean the call takes a little longer. The guy gets all pissed about being busy and says he, quote, can't waste all afternoon on the phone to some call center. So would it be all right if I called him after the weekend to go through it then? Seemed straightforward enough. This is pretty common. People are always up for the sale until they realize they'll need to spend more than one whole minute on the phone. But I scheduled the call anyway and asked if there was a specific time he wanted me to call. He says any time is fine and follows with, if Emily answers, just ask her for me. She'll make sure I get the phone and gave me a home phone number. Fast forward to today and I make a grave error. See, the application I had from the customer had his home phone number already filled in, which it turns out was not the same number he'd given me for today's callback. I called the number I thought was correct and a woman answers. I say without thinking, Oh, hi, I'm calling for Steve to confirm his broadband switch. We spoke the other day. You must be Emily. Cue uncomfortable pause. She says, this is Steve's wife, Amanda. What do you mean I must be Emily? I apologized and said, I'm so sorry. When I spoke to him the other day, he said if an Emily answered to just ask for Steve. And she goes, I effing knew it. I effing knew it and slammed the phone down. After checking the application against the post-it note I would jotted some info down on the other day, I realized Steve must have given me the number for where he was going to be today, and I'd instead called his unsuspecting wife at home. Nobody's called into my workplace yet, but if they do, I don't think they'll be happy. Update, well F. Angry Steve just called my workplace and has achieved nothing but making himself look like an even bigger effing dipstick than he already has. Also, for the record, Steve was always a jerk who can die in a hole and deserves all he gets. The reason for the TIFU was because I was worried about my job. So I haven't worked here very long and am still learning things about company policy, and it turns out that when an application is put through by an agent, it must be the applicant's own details, according to what they provide the agent. So I was only technically allowed to call the wife anyway, not Emily's home number as he gave me. If he'd wanted the call to a different number, he would have had to have a new application submitted with revised details. It wasn't enough to just give me a different number over the phone. So my job is safe. Whew. However, my manager isn't happy and I'm getting a write-up, but I can live with that. They don't mean much and I've never had one till now. Always on time and have taken overtime voluntarily, etc. Anyway, this guy phones up and before saying anything else, leads the call with one of my colleagues, who by the way is a teenage girl in what I think is her first job, and he says, put me on with the little effing C who thought it would be funny to call my wife earlier after I explicitly told him not to. Obviously the poor girl was confused and looked about to ask the room for a manager ASAP. 
I immediately piped up and said, is it Mr. X from insert location? And she confirmed, so I got her to transfer the call to my desk. Steve comes on the line and goes, I bet you think you're well effing funny, you little jerk. Put your manager on the phone and see if you're so smart when you lose your job. So in my most sarcastic, overcompensating, cutesy phone voice ever, I just say, of course, sir. Let me just transfer you to someone who can help. Then put him on hold for 20 minutes, hoping it would wind him up even more while I found my manager and told him about the whole situation. He explained what I'd said above, that I wasn't technically in the wrong from a legal standpoint, and then my poor team leader had to quickly explain to Steve that he didn't have a legal claim, but that we're sorry for the distress caused. Sucky, I know, but it's a business after all. And now, hopefully, Steve's evening culminates in his entire life being ruined. I got a disciplinary write-up for it, but it's over now. Sorry for the wall of text, but thanks for the awards. Update 2. For those wondering about the disciplinary, it was a formality and was the lowest possible level write-up my company can give. It was given as a formality because of disruption to the office. The girl Steve called was upset and it became a whole thing. He argued that I still made a mistake, but that ultimately I am in no trouble over it. He also cited on the write-up that leaving him on hold for so long just to wind him up was spiteful and petty, which, yeah. But Steve deserved it, so it'd be like that. Update 3. Not a continuation of the story, but thanks so much for the insane amount of awards. I didn't even know an Argentinium award was a thing. I'm glad this story has given you guys as much joy and faith in karma as it has my colleagues and I today. It spiraled to become the talking point of the whole office today and has been a bit of a scandal. Your support over my write-up is touching, but I won't challenge it. Hopefully before long, I'll be on to better things and this will just be a funny memory. This has even somehow birthed its own subreddit? To the creator of r slash today steve effed up, a special thanks. Thanks again for so much love. You Reddit bunch are the best. So that's it for the post guys and we hope you guys enjoyed it. This is a classic kind of TIFU post and I love the little bit at the end that this post went so viral and so popular on Reddit that someone thought it was worthy of spinning up its own subreddit. A subreddit dedicated to the hilarious way that this man got caught cheating on his wife. You love to see it, that's hilarious. Have you guys ever worked in customer service? Do you have any hilarious stories of working with customers or something that you heard over the phone? If so, we would love to hear those stories and your reactions down in the comments below. As always, if you like the post, leave a like or a comment down in the comments below. That always helps us out a lot. And if you'd like to see more and hear more posts from r slash TIFU and other subreddits in the future, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and for listening.